Dean Gemmel here, and you're about to hear another episode of The Whole Spiel from USA Curling. This one, an interview with Vicki Persinger and Chris Plies, the duo that won the recent USA Olympic team trials for mixed doubles curling. By the time this episode is up, I'll be in Omaha narrating the webcast from the team trials for traditional curling. Thanks to some generous supporters of our sport, you can watch the round robin games and any tiebreakers on NBCOlympics.com and on the NBC Sports app. We're also opening up championship registrations and announcing the five and under bond spiels that will qualify teams for the new USA Curling Five and Under National Championship. It has been challenging to find national championship sites this year, and I certainly understand why clubs are reluctant to host. Many are trying to recover from a year without revenue, or they're trying to rebuild their membership, or they want to capitalize on the exposure the Olympics provide. I get it. Uh, That said, I'm also very grateful to the clubs that have stepped up this year. Their willingness to do so is greatly appreciated. In case you're wondering, and just maybe your club is interested, we're still looking for sites for the club nationals, the mixed nationals, and the U18 nationals. Contact me if you think they could fit into your club calendar. Now, on to this episode. You're listening to The Whole Spiel, a podcast from USA Curling that puts the spotlight on people who curl in the United States, people who are building the sport, and people who just flat out love it. In this episode, we have a conversation with the team that came out on top at the recent Mixed Doubles Olympic Team Trials in Eveleth, Minnesota. They won the U.S. Olympic Team Trials for Mixed Doubles Curling and will represent the United States at the Olympic qualifying event in the Netherlands in early December. Vicky Persinger and Chris Plies, welcome to the whole spiel. Thank you. Vicky, I see you're in Alaska. I was just saying that you win the backdrop game uh, over Chris and I for anyone watching on the USA Curling YouTube channel. So where are you in Alaska, Vicky? I'm in Fairbanks, where I live, Fairbanks. and... Uh... We have a lot of snow here right now, so yeah, yeah. It looks winter's here. Right there. Nice. All right. Well, it's just over a week since uh, you both you won the uh, the event in Eveleth, uh, but of course you come back into prepping for the Olympic team trials in Omaha, which get underway this Friday, and you're both on teams in that. Chris with John Schuster and Vicky with Corey Christensen. So, last nine days or so since you won, what's it been like? Chris. Uh, yeah, no, it's been good. It's been, it's been nice. Had, uh, you know, had some interviews and all that kind of follow-up stuff and been able to get back on the ice a few times with my, uh, with my men's team up in Eveleth and, uh, yeah, just kind of trying to dial it in now for, for men's and, and get focused on, on that. And, uh, but really looking forward to getting down there with the boys. Same for you, Vicky. You headed back to Fairbanks after uh, the win in Minnesota, and now you're focused on uh, this coming Friday, Saturday start. Yeah, I uh, actually stayed a couple days after the doubles trials so that I could get in one more practice with my team. Oh, good. Um, so stayed a couple days, kind of recouped from the win, um, took it all in, and then tried to shift our focus the best we can for uh, – getting ready for Omaha and, uh, have been back in town here for a couple days and we'll leave, uh, Wednesday getting going towards Omaha and have been practicing here at my home club in Fairbanks. Wow. You're leaving on Wednesday. Yeah, man. Takes a well, while to nah. get there. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a wit to get anywhere from Alaska, but yeah, it's a great club in Fairbanks. I know that. Um, Hey, I, you know, I was there most of the, well, all week, uh, and when the games I saw, your team, I really did think, I think early in the, about midweek, I said I thought that the, that your team looked like the best team there, and a lot of that just seemed to be how the two of you uh, seemed fairly comfortable with the mixed doubles format. Do you think there's anything about your personalities that makes mixed doubles suit you more than it might other people? Uh, Vicky? Ooh, I don't know about that. Uh it's, or Chris. I guess, I guess <laughs> just uh, playing doubles in general, you just have to get 
be comfortable being uncomfortable, uh, just with all the rocks in play. And, uh, you know, you can make a lot of shots and still kind of get popped for a big one at any time. So, uh, I think our personalities work well with kind of just going with the flow out there and taking it as they come. And, uh, I thought we did really well, just kind of grinding through each game and, uh, you know, putting our best effort out there for, for everyone up to the playoffs. So. And what did you say to yourself, Vicky, on your last shot in the last game? One shot to, it was, it was a more difficult shot than it looked, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I had obviously struggled that game. And at that point I was kind of just feeling thankful that we had had a shot for um, the win, even though it was going to be tough. Uh, I was kind of sitting in the hack trying to decide if I could hit it a hair high or hair low. And I don't think that was going to work well. So I just <laughs> tried to throw out the best I could and uh, kind of thought that we were right where we needed to hit it when I let go. So just got Chris on it the whole way. And uh, I was thankful. I actually thought it was only going to maybe spill to the back four. So we actually pushed a little farther than I even thought it would go. Yeah. Um, a great shot. Great shot for the win. Good television. Chris, what do you think makes a good mixed doubles player? Um, I think people that, uh, I mean, first and foremost, I think, you know, you have to be a good shooter. Um, because I think, uh, there's, there's less that you can do. Um, you know, when you have two people sweeping and somebody at the other end call in line, you know, there's just so much more, um, I think room for error in men's and women's. Um, so being a good shooter, um, and then like kind of Vicky touched on, I think it's, it's incredibly important to just be, a you know, as good of a teammate as you can out there. And, um, you know, it's tough with mixed doubles because, uh, especially like Vicky, when she throws her first rock and then you play in a whole end and now you get to go out and play, play in, uh, you know, the skips rocks, it's, uh, it's a bit different, I'm sure. And, um, but just, you know, understanding that, uh, the, there's massive swings, um, in, in mixed doubles and being able to, uh, weather those and, and keep your, keep your cool and keep your, um, composure as best as you can, I think is a, is a huge, is a huge thing. And I think that's something that we do pretty well at. Hey, touching on that throwing order thing, you know, you guys and, uh, you know, just about everybody in the field, I think maybe John Schuster and Corey Christensen switch it up and maybe their last game once, but I didn't see other teams switch it up. You know, the rule was originally that you, or the rule still is that you can switch up who throws the middle, who throws one and five. Typically it was all males throwing two, three, four, women throwing one and five. Um, do you guys like that? Would you like to see that change at all? Cause I do. So let me hear what you guys think. <laughs> Go ahead, Vicky. Uh, uh, I don't know. We, we don't really talk. It works about... well for you guys. So yeah, you're like, hey, yeah we like it. <laughs> yeah. We're fine with it. Um, I mean, we've never even talked about changing our order or need to, and kind of just settle into our positions and go. So I, d I do know other teams do switch it up maybe depending on the scoreboard, et cetera. Right. And uh, I don't know if that, is all about shooting or if it's about who's sweeping what rocks. Um, I'm, I'm kind of still puzzled on that transition and how certain teams decide to do it or when to, or when not to. Um, Chris, what do you yeah. think about an idea where you have to switch every end? Uh, that'd be one great. way and then you that'd have to switch each end. Yeah. It'd be interesting. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, I wouldn't be like opposed to it, I suppose. I mean, it's, it's kind of, for me, it's, it's, uh, it's nice to like have a, a groove that you can get in like mentally right. when it's like, you, you know, you kind of know like the process and a lot of times mixed doubles where you're kind of following a script a bit on how the ends play out. Um, you know, it reminds me a little bit of, uh, I remember one years ago we were playing when Gunner was playing for, russia and yeah. they're were, they're were beating us up a little bit and then they jason gunlickson yep and then they brought in their peel expert and that that felt real good uh oh, that felt real good to be like oh yeah okay cool we're getting pumped and now they're gonna just bring in a guy to just to show us that you know how easy it is to peel out and, and just get us off the ice but um yeah no um I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be opposed to that. It'd be interesting. interesting It'd be weekend. interesting to try at least at one event sometime just to see how it goes. You know, like I'm, I'm always interested in trying a different format. I think, 
I think it's a little odd for myself just that the women throw way fewer rocks over the course of an event than the dudes do. So I, I'd like to see it. I'd like to see a little more balance myself, but that's just me. Um, interesting, you know, you brought up the thing about Gunlickson and when they bring in the designated peeler. Nobody's ever done that since, I don't think. Nobody has a fifth that just comes in and just hammers <laughs> rocks out of the way. Probably because most teams can do it pretty well themselves. Yeah, um, yeah. Do you guys have plans? So you're headed to Omaha. Do you have plans uh, post Omaha for how you're going to prepare for this qualifying event? Vicki, I'll let you start. Yeah, we're actually going to meet up in Seattle before we head out. Uh, that's where Sean Baton, our coach, is located. So right. also a little central for the two of us. Uh, <laughs> make Chris come my way before we go the opposite direction. Uh, so Seattle's a great club and obviously a fun city and uh, – just, I think it will be a good little training weekend for us. And then we'll take the uh, direct flight to Amsterdam from there. Chris, what are your thoughts on this qualifying event? There's a lot of teams. Um, there's certainly a range of capabilities, but there's also a lot of good teams. Probably, probably a few more, I don't want to call them free spots in the bingo card, but a few more uh, games like that than you might've had in Eveleth, but also a ton of top teams, ton of good teams. Yeah, no, no doubt. Um, you know, I feel like the U.S. qualifier was a great test for us, um, you know, with how deep the field was there. Um, I feel like we couldn't have really asked for a better, uh, you know, a better test getting ready to go over there. Um, you know, to be quite honest with you, I don't know a whole lot about a lot of the teams that have been over there um, right. or that we'll see over there. So um, we did see the Denmark team and the German team at Curling Night in America. Uh, they're on the other side of the pool, but um, kind of got a, a kind of a little bit of a sense of, of those teams. Um, I'm assuming, you know, I, we'll be familiar with maybe some of the men's and women's uh, players that'll be there from men's and women's teams. Uh, like I know Matt Samura was, was over there um, for a mixed doubles event, I think in Scotland. Um, so, I mean, I'm familiar with, with Utah and obviously a really talented player. I don't know if Sidorova will be over there for Russia, um, but yeah, you know, I think, I don't know. I mean, I feel like we're, we're lucky to have as deep of a field as we have in the States. So um, as far as talent wise and, and that sort of thing goes, we'll be, we'll be ready to, uh, you know, we kind of know how good you have to play to beat good teams. Yeah. I thought the field Neville was great. And I think the parody was indicated by the fact that we had so many teams in the mix with tiebreakers and um, uh, et, et cetera. And you guys were six and three often that doesn't get you into the one, two game does it in an event like that. But no, I mean, so much parody. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. Like, we went out, fell super far behind in our last round Robin game to Maddie and Andrew, and, um, you know, clawed back, made it, made Maddie draw the pin against the loss, and, um, you know, kind of figured that that would have knocked us out of the. We had the one, two game locked up um, going into our last round Robin game with the head to head matchups and all that kind of stuff from earlier in the week. But, um, you know, caught a break with, with uh, other teams losing to maintain that one seed. Um, you know, going into the playoffs and um, yeah, it was just, it was, uh, it's nice to be the one seed. I'll tell you that. I mean, just like <laughs> being able to have the hammer, uh, you know, looking at that, at that one, two page game with against Corey and Sarah, um, you know, we had had hammer and um, you know, Vicky had to make a really good draw against three, but if you don't have that and all of a sudden you're down three, nothing or four, nothing going, um, you know, early, it's a, a big hill to climb. So um, yeah, we were, we were fortunate to, you know, catch a few breaks along the week and, and play well enough to get that one seed and we're able to take advantage of it. Let me get your thoughts, uh, as you head, uh, to play with your four player teams, uh, in Omaha, Vicky, what are your, what's your team thinking about? How are you guys approaching the, the, the week at the, uh, team trials? Uh, well, we had a good practice, uh, before I left Minnesota. And so we're feeling really good about the way we're throwing the rock, uh, there's a lot of great teams on the women's side and um, I, we're certainly not the favorites and I think we're okay with that. Uh, we're just going to kind of grind out games as they come and similar to the doubles, uh, you know, you can't really look at the whole picture. You just have to um, win the ones you can and, you know, everyone there will probably drop a game they don't want to here and there and uh, just do everything we can to get into that three game series at the end and then may the best team win after that. Yeah, it's a grind that week, that, that, that's for sure. And Chris, of course, your team goes into it as one of the favorites. Uh, 
Uh, I know you want to get back to the Olympics personally. Um, Schuster just seems to go all the time, but uh, but uh, how does it feel going in as, as one of the favorites? Yeah, I mean, we're ready to go. Um, you know, it's been a bit of a challenge the last uh, couple of years, but I think it's been the same for everybody. Um, you know, when and I vanished. You guys had a little challenge with your club. You're not yeah. having to travel for ice, which maybe not everybody knows. Yeah, with Duluth hasn't had ice this year with deal with a, we had a deal with a plant issue. So they actually brought in a, a portable chiller unit to make sure that we had ice for the club members this year, um, which was great for them to be able to, to get some ice in there. And I think when we get home from Omaha, um, you know, leading into our mixed doubles, I'll be able to practice at home, which would be really nice. But, um, you know, we're, we're ready to go. We've, we've been fortunate, uh, to, you know, over this last quad to, to pretty much have all of the international, um, competition games that were available. Um, and, uh, you know, there's obviously John's got a track record. Um, the guys that I play with have had a track record of, of success at the Olympic trials. And I think, uh, you know, just the, the confidence that we have and the familiarity that we have with these big moments is, is something that we'll lean on a bit, but definitely same as the women's. I mean, there's a bunch of good teams. So we're going to have to play real good to, to make it out, but uh, we're all just really looking forward to the challenge. And um, you know, I love playing with those guys and um, I think all of us have a very specific role on the team that we've all embraced and all look forward to uh, you know, just doing whatever we have to do at our position to, to come out on top. Hey, tell me a little bit about the the break caused by COVID and and how it affected you. Uh, I'll start with you, Vicky. Was it was it um, you know there was a whole season really where there wasn't much curling. Um, how much did you miss it, and how, how much did was it actually maybe valuable and helped you recharge? What's what's your take on it? Yeah, it was definitely a difficult season um, because it wasn't just straight up canceled. I think the whole we might be playing in nice. this event. Ah, oh, it's canceled. We're, we have tickets for this event. We're going tomorrow. It's canceled kind of thing. Um, that's kind of hard to string along uh, for basically over a year. Uh, I didn't my club decided not to put in ice. Um, there wasn't any in my state. Uh, Seattle didn't open, couldn't cross the border to go to Canada. So, uh, in theory, the closest ice I could even practice on was in the cities. I only got a couple days of practice, um, over a year before our event in May with the little bubble we did for, uh, doubles and women's, um, and kind of, it, it really made you, um, rely on kind of, you know, the riding a bike thing and uh, a lot of visualization and watching games because that's the best a lot of people could get. Um, right. You know, there was only so much access to ice. And so I was pretty happy with the way um, that I found a way to make some during that event uh, during the two weeks and definitely got held up by my teammates who had more access to ice. But I think it was a good uh, experience to have that kind of challenge and, uh, was really proud of my women's team for, uh, getting through that week and finding a way to win that one as well. And, uh, yeah, it'd be nice to carry some of that momentum and, you know, pushing through all these hardships and that's what grinding all these wins out is about. Um, you have to have that in you in order to win anything. And, uh, so I think it was, overall a good experience and while it was nice to have the little break from curling it definitely made uh, me miss being out there so yeah kudos to you I uh, you're talking about the the national championships we held in Wausau in May I didn't realize you hadn't been on the ice that much to be honest I thought you played really well and as someone who's Thanks. just returning to the ice this fall and not playing well at all it was very impressive so Chris Plies <laughs> how about you and uh what did you do during the break yeah. I mean, we were pretty lucky in Duluth. We had pretty much private access to a, to our curling club and we have really great ice makers at our home club. So we were able to, um, you know, practice on great ice pretty much all winter and, um, you know, went up to Calgary for the world championships and were able to lock up a spot for the U S in Beijing. And, um, you know, I think that that week was, was, uh, I mean, it's definitely one that I'll remember for a long time. Um, you know, just, we, I'll just touch on that quickly. You guys had to go to the World Championships in Calgary, which were held in a bubble, mm -hmm. and top six teams 
get a spot in the Olympics from that. It's usually over a two-year process. You had to finish top six. I don't know if everybody knows how much pressure that feels. I mean, I never felt that kind of pressure, but I played in one world championship, and I felt like everybody in the United States in the curling world was relying on me. So tell me, talk to me a little bit about how that felt. Yeah, no, it was, uh, you know, it was definitely, we were definitely aware of the circumstances that we were facing and, um, you know, had a bit of a slower start than we were kind of had wanted, but, um, we're able to, you know, there was one specific day where we had Norway who was undefeated, I think at the time. And then we had the boys, uh, Moet from Scotland, um, that night. And I hear they're good. Yeah. They've been, uh, <laughs> they've been turning on the jets here, uh, as of recent. Um, but yeah, definitely a great team over there. And, um, but knew that, I mean, if we, if we lost even one of those games, we were going to, you know, have some challenges ahead of us for the rest of the round robin. And we're able to kind of gut out two games, um, that game against Scotland even was something where Steiner was, um, you know, knew that he's had, he's, he's kind of dealt with a, a injury with his arm. So he was, you know, he wanted to take a break and brought Colin our fifth in, um, for that game. And we're able to get a, I think it was an extra end win, um, against those guys. And, um, it, yeah, it was just great. It was, it was something where I think our team really showcased what we, what we do really well. And that's just grinding out those long weeks and, um, you know, bringing our best performance, uh, as the week goes on. And, uh, unfortunately, you know, we had the, the COVID kind of issue with the false positive, which was unfortunate. Um, cause we finished the round robin in third, uh, in third place. And, um, you know, but I was proud of the guys and the way that we, we handled that whole situation, even though we lost that quarterfinal game against Benoit and the guys from Switzerland, um, you know, we went out there and, and played a real good game and just ran into, I mean, both times we played Benoit, I wish the first game we played them would have been on, on TV. It was one of the most insane games I've ever been a part of. I mean, that kid made literally made six or seven shots that I wasn't even sure were there. Um, yeah. So the kids just, that. yeah, he's just, he can just go unconscious and, and just make some crazy shots. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was nice. It, you know, we had the luxury of going up there and getting those big games against, uh, against really good competition and, and just kind of matching up against guys, uh, even after not playing a tour season that year. So I think it's kind of the same thing this year. We haven't really, we decided not to play a whole ton just due to COVID and, and, um, you know, the concerns of getting stuck in Canada or, or something like that. So, um, but we've, you know, we had a good system that we, that we developed last year and we're just like, all right, screw it. We're just going to run with it again this year and go into the trials like that. I think John's always been a player who relies a bit more on practice than maybe some teams, right? Fewer games, yeah. more practice. It's sort of always been his mode. Yeah. I mean, John is, uh, you know, John and I are super similar in, in the fact that like we are people that practice daily. Um, so, you know, and in, when Duluth had ice and when that, since we've had to go to Eveleth, I mean, John's, you know, been living in his parents' house for a good portion of that. So he could be closer to the Eveleth curling club. Um, and he just, he just throws a ton of rocks and um, you know, he's also just one of those guys that when the, when the lights turn on in those arenas, he's as, as ready as anybody I've ever seen. Um, and I can say that there's nobody, um, you know, nobody out there that I, you know, when we need to drive to the forefoot or we need, um, you know, a big shot to win, there isn't really anybody else out there that I'd rather have thrown that rock than John. Well, full praise to your team for getting that spot in Calgary and to Tabitha Peterson's team. I'm sure Vicky, you're happy they got that spot as well. Um, so, but didn't quite work out. We just missed by just one spot for this. So now you've got to go into this Olympic qualifying event in the Netherlands. Vicky, are you, uh, uh, you know, have you, have you talked, do you talk to sports psychologists at all? It's a tricky one, right? It's a tricky one. You won this thing and now you got to go to this qualifying event. How are you dealing with it? Uh, you know, I think like Chris was saying, our trials was a great test and, um, put us through a lot that I think will be beneficial for going to this event. Uh, it was a little weird emotionally to win that game just because right. it didn't necessarily mean we were going. Um, but it just felt like a big sigh to, you know, cross that phase off of the list, um, and get ready for the next, uh, like well, Chris I, I think saying, the thing is your win your Olympic dreams live on and others die, right? They so. do. Yeah. And so the road continues for us. Yeah. And, uh, I think it would be unwise to, uh, expect any less 
of the competition there than at our trials. So I think we're going to expect that everyone that we're playing there is going to want to go to the Olympics just as bad as we do. Um, and so we're going to prep as well as we can to play our best there and, and hope we come out with that win. Well, from what I saw in Eveleth, I'm, I'm confident you guys will be great representatives and, and I'm confident you will get those spots. So uh, good luck to both of you in that and good luck to both of you next week. Uh, I'm looking forward to a great week of curling. I'll be there and doing the NBCOlympics.com webcast and I think it's going to be a great week. And so thanks both of you to both of you for your time today. Yeah, thanks, Dean. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, thank you, Dean. That was Vicky Persinger and Chris Plies on the whole spiel. You can watch them curl on their respective men's and women's teams at the trials in Omaha, Nebraska, and cheer them on at the Olympic qualifying event for mixed doubles in the Netherlands in December. I'm Dean Gemmel, Director of Curling Development at USA Curling, and I hope you'll reach out to me with suggestions for future episodes or to share ideas that can help grow our game. Email me at dean.gemmel at usacurling.org. And remember to visit the USA Curling website to find news, get results, watch web streams, or check out some of the latest USA Curling merchandise and apparel. Be a member, be a supporter, be a fan, but stay involved in the sport you love.